Hi, I'm Susan. Welcome to my home and studio at Wendy Acre Cottage. It's a hundred year old craftsman cottage where I love to paint and garden and entertain and care for all my wonderful fur babies, both those that are adopted and all the little fosters. It's also my home base for many fun adventures of the art, history, and gardening kind. Hey artist, it's Susan here. It's been suggested that I show my face occasionally on the videos and that's something I'm not uh, comfortable doing. So maybe if I do it a little more often, it will be a little more natural. But right now it's completely outside my comfort zone. But here we are. And I was gonna show you this painting that I worked on last night. It's in watercolor. And it's of a fawn and um, <laughs> I'm a member of the chestnut group of plein air painters and plein air simply means painting outside but it's very hard to paint an animal outside because they are not going to pose for 30 minutes or longer for you to be able to paint them so when I paint animals I paint from photographs and that's with pet portraits or um, uh, wildlife it, it doesn't matter any animal is not going to pose for you so um, there are there are artists who who can paint from life animals and that just amazes me at their talent I don't happen to have that um, Audubon uh, who painted a lot of birds would go out into the woods and I know this because I was down in st. Francisville Louisiana and there was a house on a home tour uh, that they referred to as the Audubon house. Now, it was not his house, but he was the um, tutor or live-in um, uh, teacher for the children that, that of the family who did own this house. And the lower room was his, and there were little vignettes set up with dead birds because he would go out and trap and kill birds and basically taxidermy them in the position that he wanted to paint them and then set that still life up and then paint from from that scene and that's how he was able to do all of his bird paintings and um, I'm not about to go out and kill anything let alone a fawn um, so I paint from photographs and I don't have a problem with that uh, a lot of artists think you must paint from life and that is their opinion and they do that incredibly well but I give myself permission to paint from photographs and I do believe if Audubon or any of the other painters who <laughs> used to go out and kill their subjects um, had the option of photography I'm sure they would choose photography so anyway uh, we paint this from a photograph today and I thought um, I, I, I I want to enter this into a show at Radnor Lake uh, next month and I thought the title blocks were due last night by midnight and as it turns out I was mistaken it was off a week um, but I went on to the website to register this painting that had not even been painted yet because I felt like if I went ahead and made the commitment that I was gonna paint it that in the next two three weeks I could get it painted so I go in there, put in my name, my contact information, the size of the painting, the, the medium, and then they wanted a JPEG photograph of it. So last night, very quickly, I put together this painting and I went ahead and filmed myself um, painting it, but there's no narration uh, because I didn't know if it was even going to turn out. But I really do like it and I like it for a way I wasn't expecting. So what I like about this painting is the fawn itself is in focus but everything behind it is almost an abstract can you see that so what i did as i was painting the fawn and the fawn was pre-sketched so i went out i went ahead and used a pencil and put in my shapes for the actual animal itself and i kind of went in and and painted in some leaves just kind of where they might go um, but then I stopped because I really wanted to keep that as soft and loose and abstract as possible. So as I was painting the fawn, to clean my brush, I might take that same color and just whoosh it somewhere in the background. And what I was trying to accomplish is to say there's something back there, but it doesn't matter what it is. And so what I want you to look at is the fawn, not at the scenery behind the fawn. Now, there's blue in the baby's eyes um, some reflection of blue 
So I scrubbed in blue in the background. And I don't know what would be blue in the forest, but um, I did it anyway. Browns, uh, different shades of white, um, a little orange, a little birdie, uh, berry color. Berry color. <laughs> a berry color. Um, anyway, they're all in there. And again, I can't explain what it is supposed to be depicting behind the animal, only that it's depicting there's something there. Now, one thing I am looking at with fresh eyes is, especially this ear right here gets lost because the colors in the ear seem to be the same colors as whatever this is behind the ear. And I don't even know what that is behind the ear, but it's weird to me that it starts out a berry color, like a like a burgundy color and then goes up into a bluish purple in the same shape. I'm not sure what I was thinking and it might need to be addressed. The other thing I've noticed with fresh eyes is that um, the ears look a bit lined. Do you see how it looks dark? Almost as if it's been tattooed a little outline on his ears. And I think I got the value off because the ears definitely do have shadow in there, but I'm not sure they're that dark. So I may go in with a clean, wet brush and try to soften those edges and pull some of that pigment out, um, trying to make that softer. The other thing is I left the white of the paper to be my white in the spots on the fawn and in the throat and chest of the fawn. But the way the sun was almost backlit, um, it needed to go a little wider there on the on the throat and a little on the back and even a little uh, through the hairs, the little hairs on the ears. So I did use a little bit of a white uh, paint for that and I'll, I'll show you that in the video. Um, the spots down here in the dark are not white though. That's one thing that was throwing me off. I had all the spots white. But as the sun's hitting the top of the back, those are white. But down here in the shadow, they're almost a um, grayish purple, um, maybe even um, a periwinkle color. So when I say purple, I don't really mean purple, but I mean in the purple family. So it's a pale, light, purplish, cool white, it basically is what's chosen. So there I did it. I'm in front of the camera and this is me. This is my home. Uh, this is where I paint most often and um, I'll get right to the video to show you how I did this and please always call me, text me, send me a message on social media if you have any questions at all. I'd love to help you and love to see what your paintings look like. So uh, let's do this.
Here's our painting. I'm probably going to get it framed. Uh, since it's watercolor, you don't want to put it in an open frame. It has to be with under glass to keep it protected. But uh, this one's a keeper. It's probably going to go to the Radnor Lake Show. And I uh, can't wait to see it among all the other paintings there that are so wonderful from other chestnuts that are in the show. So there you have it. If you're new to this channel, I'd love for you to subscribe and stay around. And if you're one of the ones that have been here for a while, welcome back. And I'm so happy you're here. Please tell all your friends and be sure and paint your own paintings and be sure and tag me in those on social media because I'd love to see them, love to give you some feedback. And it makes me so happy that I'm happy to uh, be able to help you through this creative journey. So we'll see you next time.